Good evening, everyone. I know this isn't the way that we want to gather for Christmas Eve service, and trust me, it was not an easy decision to make to have to cancel tonight. But with the way the weather has been, uh, our parking lot not accessible, uh, we just wanted to make sure that it was safe for everyone. So here we are with recorded message, some music, a video that went up for our kids, uh, a good opportunity still to gather with our family at home if we're able, and friends, and, and to just be safe and warm. If there are any needs in our community, if you have anything that you are in need of, please do reach out to your neighbors, to your church family. We want to be able to be with you to make it accessible, to make those things answered for you. So if you have a need, please do reach out to us and we will do our best to make sure those are covered. As we uh, read tonight, if you've joined with us in person or watched online the last few weeks, we've been talking about preparing for the King, talking about Jesus coming through the, the, the Advent season into Nativity, preparing for the King that was promised. Today we're going to look at receiving the King. We're going to do that again tomorrow morning for Christmas morning if we're able to join in person, uh, but tonight we begin that and we're going to be looking through Luke 1 verses 39 to 55. It says, at that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors." Elizabeth and Mary are receiving their king. Mary carrying this child and Elizabeth, uh, her cousin who is off in the hill country. In that moment when Mary walks through the door, Elizabeth is filled with joy. The mother of her king, of her Messiah, comes into the room and the unborn John the Baptist, who, Mary, who Elizabeth carries, leaps in her womb. The knowledge of the presence of Jesus in that moment fills the place and John the Baptist leaps in joy. And Mary then begins to sing one of the most emotion-filled and revealing songs recorded in Scripture. It talks about all of who she is. She goes on full display in this moment. All that Mary carries within her, all that she knows, is brought out in song. There are prophetic words repeated by her. There's a telling of the answered promise to Israel. There is acknowledgement of who this child that she carries will become. It is a song declaring the kingship of Jesus. It is inspired by Holy Spirit, and it is Mary's reception of her king. And how we receive the king is actually in direct correlation to how we have prepared for him. Mary had an angel come and share with her the incredible revelation that she would become pregnant with the Messiah. Joseph had the same angel share the good news with him. Elizabeth had a supernatural encounter with Jesus before he was born. The wise men followed a star. The shepherds had an angel chorus sing of his glory and how to recognize him. Each one of these knew the power and promise the birth of Jesus represented. They held in their hearts the prophecy of Isaiah from 700 years before. Israel had all of this time prepare for Jesus yet many actually missed his identity. You and I have the availability of the written word. We have the proximity of each other to hear of his reign, and we have the presence of, Holy, of the Holy Spirit leading us 
to be prepared for him. When people call that they want to visit us, we go through the motions of preparing for them. We have been told, maybe this is the first time you are being told, to prepare for the king who is going to return. The truth is that no one will have a reason to say they had no time, they had no knowledge. The Bible says that all will hear his name and what he has come to earth to achieve to make a way for each one to be reconciled, to be with the Father, that we could be saved from our sins. Tomorrow morning, some of us will have a chance to gather with family and friends to celebrate the season. There will be gifts, there may be gifts shared. There may be turkey and potatoes and cheesecake to fill your stomach. The lights on your tree can be turned on to brighten the night. All of these are good. And you should, as you are able, do these things, share them with one another. But Christmas isn't about these things. Family and friends are a valid part of every single day, and we should seek to have time with them often. But Christmas is actually about one thing. It's about receiving the King. We say often that Christmas is the birth of Jesus. We celebrate his birthday, but that's really not it either. It's a fun way to remember that Christmas is about Christ, but it's really about receiving the King. It's no longer about preparation. This was Advent. We spent four weeks in Advent preparing for the arrival of the one spoken one uh, spoken of, the promised Messiah, that he would return But the original Advent ended over 2,000 years ago. And yes, each day we need to set aside time to prepare for our King, to make sure that our lives are in line with His Word. But the King will return, and we need to be ready to receive Him. That day when Jesus arrived as a baby, the Nativity as we call it, the world was changed. History unfolded in the arms of a teenage mother who now held the King of Kings. She was filled with joy. Her heart leapt at the knowledge of who this young child is. Nothing would ever be the same. Mary received the king with praise, acknowledging his true identity and telling all who would listen what this would mean for them. Now, for you and I, we have this day to receive King Jesus in the same way, and it will change everything. Pray with me. Father, thank you for an opportunity. If we are with friends, family, or on our own, to be joined by you, to receive you in our homes, that we would take this moment to acknowledge that you are Lord. Father, if there's any who are in need in this season, whether it be a physical need or if they are grieving, if it's an emotional need, We trust that by your spirit, you will meet them where they are and you will fill those needs as only you can. But also use us in this season, that we would be an answer to the prayers of many, that we would not hold back in those moments, but we would hear you telling us, this is right, go and do, be the church. Father, as we have taken time to prepare for you, to prepare for Jesus, may we be in a state of receiving him today, that our hearts would be full of joy, that we would know our King is here and we would receive him gladly. And in these moments, I pray, Jesus, that you are glorified, that you are honored in our hearts and our lives, that we would take a moment on this Christmas season, on Christmas Eve 2022, to acknowledge who you are and rightfully in our lives that we would place you high above all others. We put you in your place of honor, that you are our King, and we receive you well today in your wonderful name. Bless this night. Bless our day tomorrow. And Father, keep each one safe. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen. Well, we wish you a Merry Christmas. Again, we are sorry we are unable to be with you in person today, but we hope that you are safe and you are warm and that you would take the time to check in on your neighbors and wish them a very Merry Christmas as well. Have a wonderful night.